Let me know if you still hear a strange clicking. I'll keep reading and I'll look and see. Uh, Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan, Ada, the daughter of Ellen the Hittite, and Ohalebama, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zebion the Hivite, and Bashmith, Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, I'm sorry. Mom, let me know if you still hear that clicking sound. Because I see your comment here. It says, strange clicking sound may be the, my device. And Ada bare to Esau Eliphaz, and Bashmeth bare Reuel, and Ahelabama bare Jeush, and Jalon, and Korah. These are the sons of Esau, which were born unto him in the land of Canaan. And Esau took his wives and his sons and his daughters and all the persons of his house and his cattle and all his beasts and all his substance, which he had got in the land of Canaan, and went into the country from the face of his brother Jacob. For their riches were more than that they might dwell together. And the land wherein they were strangers could not bear them because of their cattle. So both of them were so blessed of God that they couldn't live in the same land. They had so many possessions. It reminds me of Abraham and Lot. Verse 8, Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is, Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. So this is the second time that has let us know that when they say Esau, they're, they're talking about Edom, the Edom. Let me see. So verse 9, And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons. Eliphaz, the son of Ada, the wife of Esau. Reuel, the son of Basemeth, the wife of Esau. And the sons of Eliphaz were Timon, Omar, Zepho, and Gatim, and Kenaz. And Timnah was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son. And she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. These were the sons of Adah, Esau's wife. So, see that word Amalek there? We're going to come to a place where we'll read about the Amalekites. And they came from Amalek. Verse 13. And these are the sons of Rael, Nahath, and Zerah, Shema, and Mizah. These were the sons of Bashmeth, Esau's wife. Verse 14. And these were the sons of Ahelabama, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zebion, Esau's wife. And she bare to Esau, Jaish, and Jalem, and Korah. These were dukes of the sons of Esau the sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn son of Esau, Duke Timon, Duke Amar, Duke Zepho, Duke Kenaz, Duke Korah. You, I, I, I remember that name, Korah. Duke Get Gatum, Duke Amalek. These are the dukes that came of Eliphaz in the land of Edom. These were the sons of Adah. And these were the sons of Ruel, Esau's son, Duke Nahat, Duke Zerah, Duke Shama, Duke Mizan. These are the dukes that came of Ruel in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Bathmeth, Esau's wife. Verse 18. And these are the sons of Eholebama, Esau's wife, Duke Jeish, Duke Jalem, Duke Korah. These were the dukes that came of Ahalabama, the daughter of Anna, Esau's wife. So they're telling you the son, and they're telling you the leader of these tribes. Verse 19, these are the sons of Esau, who is Edom, 
and these are their dukes. So that's the third time they said he is Edom. Verse 20, these are the sons of Seir, the Horite, who inhabited the land Lotan and Shobal and Zebon and Anna and Dishon and Ezra and Dishon. These are the dukes of the Horites, the children of Seir in the land of Edom. And the children of Lotan were Hori and Hemam, and Lotan's sister was Timnah. And the children of Shobel were these, Alvin and Manahath and Abel, Shepho and Anam. Verse 24, and these are the children of Zebion, both Aha. it says a J in this name, a Aja and Ana. These, this was that Ana that found the mules in the wilderness as he fed the asses of Zibion, his father. Now, King James, if I'm not mistaken, this says he found the mules, but I think other, some other translations say he found the hot springs. Let me look at Amplified. Let's see. Let's see what it says. Verse 24. Here's Amplified. Now, King James said he found the mules. Amplified says, These are the sons of Zibion, Ea and Anna. This is the Anna who found the hot springs in the wilderness as he pastured the donkeys of Zibion, his father. So, <laughs> I wonder if he found both or if he found one or the other. I would have to look at, I'd have to look at the actual Hebrew, uh, which I'm not going to do right now. <laughs> but um, I will put it as a footnote. That way it won't take me a long time to verify that he find the hot springs or the, what did they say in King James? Mules in the wilderness. <laughs> Verse 25, and the children of Anna were these, Dishon and Aholimah, the daughter of Anna. And these are the children of Dishon, Hemdan and Eshban and Ithran and Karen. The children of Ezer are these, Bilhan and Zavan and Achan. The children of Dishan are these, Uz and Aaron. These are the dukes that came of the Horites, Duke Lotan, Duke Shobal, Duke Zibion. Duke Anna, verse 30, Duke Dishon, Duke Ezer, Duke Dishon. These are the dukes that came of Hori among their dukes in the land of Seir. And these are the kings that reigned in the land of Edom before their reign, before there reigned any kings of the children of Israel. So before the children of Israel reigned anywhere, they were reigning, is what 31 says. Verse 32, Ma said, <laughs> mules are crossbreeds. Go to research that one. Yeah, I'm going to look at that because other translations say hot springs. And I don't usually look at King James. So when I, when I just read it then and it said mules, I was like, what? <laughs> That's a little different. So I look at the Hebrew and see. Uh, which one is right and I type it down um where were we were we in 32 and Bela the sons of Beor reigned in Edom and the name of his city was Denhaba and Bela died and Jobab the son of Zerah of Basra reigned in his stead and Jobab died and Hushan of the land of Timani reigned in his stead and Husham died, and Adad, the son of Bedad, who smote Midian in the field of Moab. Okay, so Midian, you'll see that again, because you have the Midianites coming up in future um, chapters. And I'll point them to you. I think the next chapter might actually mention a Midianite group. Uh, and then this Moab, the field, he smote Midian in the field of Moab. Moab is, the, uh, is um, the area that the Moabites lived in, who were the descendants of Lot and one of his daughters. Because Moab means from my father. 
So I remember that. So Bedad, Hadad, the son of Bedad, who smote the Midian in the field of Moab, reigned in his stead. And the name of his city was Ab Abith. And Hadad died. And Samla of Masrika reigned in his stead. And Samla died. And Saul of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his stead. And Saul died. So a lot of these names you might notice are being repeated. Different people, same name sometimes. Because you see this Saul here, and you know about one of the most famous Sauls in the world being found in the New Testament, who was uh, referred to as Paul now. Um, I was seeing on a previous post on Facebook that it's very important to jot down notes when you read the Bible, because when you run across these familiar names, you want to make sure you got that genealogy right and you, and you visualize in the right person because they usually give you um, where that person is from. This says Saul of Rehoboth. Well, the Saul that we are familiar with in the New Testament is Saul of Tarsus. So you kind of need to know where they're from and who their father is because sometimes if it doesn't say Saul of Tarsus or Saul of Rehoboth, it'll say Saul the son of such and such. So I have so many notes to help me, because if not, I'll get confused. I'll have the wrong person in mind, and be like, wait a minute, this person died two chapters ago. What? A but no, it's a different person, same, ne same first name. Just like we have a lot of people with same first names. Okay, so verse 38, and Saul died, and Balhana, the son of Akbor, reigned in his stead. And Balhana, the son of Akbor, died. And Hadar reigned in his city. And the name of his city was Pua. A pow. P-A-U. Okay, Mama just put in a note and said, KJV is wrong. They found water. So she must have researched it. So that's what I say. A lot of people only read King, King James and they kind of talk about you if you don't read King James but it's good to um, research because mistakes happen you know it it was written by hand by these men so you know different mistakes can happen it was translated by these group of people so mistakes can happen so that's why I like to look at the original Hebrew brew a lot of times because I'd be like wait a minute that don't sound right let me look and see what it really says. Um, let's see. We're in 39. Uh, 39 in the middle. It says, And his wife's name was Mehetabel, the daughter of Metrid, the daughter of Mezahab. Verse 40. And these are the names of the dukes that came of Esau, according to their families, after their places, by their names. Duke Timna, Duke Alva, Duke Jetheth, Duke Ahalabama, Duke Ella, Duke Pennon, Duke Kenes, Duke Timon, Duke Mibsar, Duke Magdil, Duke Aram. These be, these be the dukes of Edom, according to their habitations in the land of their possession. He is Esau, the father of the Edomites. So I think that was the fourth time that they have reminded us in relation to Edom and the Edomites. They're talking about um, Esau and his descendants. And most of the time, and most of his descendants li lived in Seir, S-E-I-R. Um, and that's good to remember because when we go further in the book after the um, Exodus, of the children of Israel are going to pass, try to pass through um, that land and they're going to run across the Edomites again. And it's crazy because that's technically like their cousins. Okay, so we get into chap chapter 37. 
It says, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. And I think it's crazy that Jacob and his father lived in the promised land already as a stranger. But then you'll see further down that they went to Egypt and had to fight to get back to that promised land that they left, the descendants left, or ancestors left. But they were already in the promised land here. <laughs> okay, verse 2. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah. That's one of Jacob's concubines. And with the sons of Zilpah. That's another of his father, Jacob slash Israel, Israel's concubines. His father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. So he went telling his dad what they were saying. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. So um, Israel, remember we're calling him Israel instead of Jacob now. Excuse me. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I noticed when God is kind of upset with Israel, he'll call him Jacob again. Like when, when, um, even when his descendants slip and do something wrong, he'll call them Jacob and tell them they need to be Israel again and act right. <laughs> because in verse 2 it says Jacob, but in verse 3 it says here, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. He showed favoritism because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. So he gave him a fancy, colorful, bright coat. He didn't give his other children that. And when his brethren saw, I keep saying brethren like I-N-G, and his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers. When they saw that they loved him more than the rest, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Like they ain't had nothing to say to him. They ain't want nothing to do with him. Verse 5, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. After Joseph told his brothers what he dreamed, they hated him even more. Verse 6, And he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, hear me, please. This this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, he's telling them the dream, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. So he was telling them, I had a dream of this sheaf that I was and you all were sheaves as well. Y'all were surrounding me. And I came, arose higher than you guys. And you all had to obey my sheaf. Verse 8. And his brethren said to him, shalt thou, sh shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him in his dream and for his words. So they hated him even more when... They, he was using this symbolism. The dream was using this symbolism of them being in servitude to him. Verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream. I have dreamed a dream more. Excuse me. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Now remember... It's 12, it's 12 children, so Joseph being one of the 12, the 11 stars here that he said represents his brothers. The sun and moon represent his mother and father. And they said that they all obeyed him. 
verse 10, and he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him, even though he was favored by his father, his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Verse 11, And his brethren envied him, but his father observed his saying. So even though he rebuked him openly, he was paying attention. It says his father observed his saying, but his brothers envied him. Verse 12, and his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. You remember Shechem? That's that uh, town that Simeon and uh, Levi killed all the men in and took the women as all the spoils. So it says that uh, is, uh, his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem, in that town. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the, the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here I am. So, Joseph, so Israel was saying, uh, go to your brothers. Go, go to where your brother was flock. Joseph wasn't doing anything. He wasn't working. He probably thought, since I had these dreams of my um, mom said obeisance me to bow down. And I, I kind of figured that because other translations would say they, the things bowed to him. Uh, he, so Joseph, had, after having these dreams, probably felt like he didn't have to do any of that dirty work anymore. He's above everybody <laughs> um let's see so israel told him to go with his brothers to feed those flocks uh, so we're in verse 14 and he said to him go i pray thee see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks and bring me word again so he sent him out of the veil hebron and he came to shechem and found him. And behold, he, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? Verse 16. And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They have departed hence. They have left here. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. Now it's a Dothan, Alabama, but this is a very different Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, they saw him from a distance, even before he came near unto them, before he got close to them, they conspired against him to slay him. So the 11 talked about killing him. Verse 19, and they said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh. Here come this dreamer. Verse 20, come now therefore and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast hath devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams then. So they, so they said, let's kill him and throw him in this pit and see what these dreams, if these dreams will come true then that he's having. We'll say some evil beast had uh, eaten him. Verse 21, and Reuben heard it. And Reuben is the oldest of the 12. And he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. So his older brother said, wait a minute, lest we don't need to kill him. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. So he had planned to hide him in the pit and then go back when the others aren't aware and save him and take him to his father. Verse 23, and it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, that fancy colorful coat that his dad gave him. They took it off his coat of many colors that was on him. Verse 24, and they took him and cast him into a pit and the pit was empty. Mama takes his destiny was guided 
was guiding Reuben. Yeah, that's right. Um, it says, and they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. I'm glad they specified that. <laughs> Verse 25, and they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead. Now, are the children of Is Ishmael their um, Abraham, their great grandfather's other son, Ishmael? So they saw a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? So Judah, that's another son that saved uh, Joseph. Uh, and in the story of when Joseph well, spoiler alert, when Joseph goes to uh, Egypt, you will see Reuben and Judah playing a key part um, again. So I'll remind you of that when it happens. Judah is, uh, one, of, is one of Leah's sons. And it means, Judah means, I'm sorry, my internet is acting up. So every time it drops, I pause a minute. Judah means praise. And um, the, line, the bloodline of Judah is very important because that's the line that Jesus, Yeshua, David, and them come out of. So he was saying, what profit is it to slay? What, how does it profit us to slay our brother and conceal his blood, hide his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content with that. They said, okay. Judah did not know that he was, he thought he was planning the future for uh, Joseph to go with the Ishmaelites, but he really was, God already was behind that because that's how he's going to end up in Egypt. Verse 28, then there passed by Midianite merchantmen. Remember the last chapter I told you that um, we, we read about Midian and I told you that we would see the Midianites soon. Uh, this is them. Because uh, I think the previous chapter said that Habab or whatever his name was slew a Midianite. He slew a Midianite in the land of Moab. I read that earlier. So Midianites are very important. We see them next to the Israelites from uh, here all the way to the New Testament. They'll, they'll be with next to the Israelites. Remember Midian, Midianites, that's uh, the tribe or the group of people that Jethro comes from and Moses' wife, Jethro's um, daughter. So it says, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned unto the pit. He didn't realize that transaction happened. Uh, but he returned to the pit to do what he thought to steal him away and get, get him to his dad without the brothers knowing. And behold, Joseph was not in the pit. And he rent his clothes. He ripped his clothes. Because at that time during uh, times of mourning and stress, they would rip their clothing. Put on sackcloth and ashes. Humble themselves. Verse 30. And he returned unto his brother and said, The child is not, and I wither shall... And, the child is not, and I, whether shall I go? Sam, where, where, where did he go? And they took Joseph's coat, verse 31, and killed a kid of goats. They, they killed some baby goats and dipped the coat in blood. 
and they, they and they sent the coat of many colors and brought it to their father and said this have we found know now whether it be thy son's coat or no so they said we found this this coat of many colors with with blood on it is is it does it look like your son joseph's coat they knew verse 33 and he he knew it and said it is my son's coat and evil beasts have devoured him joseph is without doubt rent in pieces so he's saying joseph is is without doubt torn into pieces there's a note about midian uh here it says midian is the fourth son of abraham by keturah the woman Abraham married after Sarah's death. His brothers are Zimran, John, I'm not going to read all of that part. His sons are Ephah, Ephra, Enoch, Abida, and all of them. Mom wrote that on there. So yeah, you're going to always see the Midianites beside the Israelites. Uh, let's see, verse... Do, do, do. 34. And Jacob rent his clothes. He ripped his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loin so he wouldn't be naked. He put that cloth on his loin, his privates, and mourned for his son many days because he thought he was dead. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Verse 36, And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Pot Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. I see um, interchanging of Ishmaelites and Midianites um, here too on these ver this version. So that's chapter... 30, um, 36 and 37. <clears throat> so, Ma, um, you put here, Midian is the fourth son of Abraham by Keturah, the woman of Abraham married after Sarah's death. So I want to point, if you did not know this, I found this out through the book of Enoch, I believe it was, that, um, Ishmael, not Ishmael, the descendants of Abraham that are Muslim. I found out that they're actually from Keturah. I thought they were directly from Ishmael. So it's interesting here that you put Midian as the fourth son of Abraham by Keturah. So I'm wondering if they are the modern Midianites. I don't know. I have to look into that. But I, I did read that they came from Keturah. Um, so that's, that's very interesting. But like I said, it's very important to keep your notebook by you and do some um, research with uh, the direction of the Holy Ghost, of course, because sometimes you can run into um, some crazy very very off stuff <laughs> just looking you know on the internet so you need the holy ghost to guide you but keep your notebook take notes of what the bible is saying and you can dissect it from there and go from there i like to look at the original language and everything the old testament is in hebrew and aramaic which is a sister language of hebrew which is actually the language that jesus spoke during that time it was aramaic uh, and the New Testament is uh, written in Kwani Greek, in Greek. It's a very ancient form of Greek. So I like to look, look back at those things to see, you know, and connect the dots. When I do that, I actually find it makes more sense. Some people say the Bible doesn't make sense and so forth, but when I actually dig it actually makes more sense. You know, light bulbs go off and it connects the dots. So uh, I encourage you to do that. Um, so 
Friday night, if you look at Mylon Hudson's page, Overseer Mylon Hudson, she'll have Friday night Bible study. I, I don't know what book she's in right now because she, after you get in the um, New Testament, some of those books are just one and two chapters. So she's moving very quickly. I think last week she was on one of the Peters. I want to say Second Peter, but she's going backwards up. Um, 7.30 p.m. Central, Mylon Hudson's page. And then Sunday night, 7.30 p.m. Mylon Hudson's page is the actual service. They, I believe they'll be in the studio. Last week we had Devon Rowery, Rory playing the drums for them. And uh, the video was messed up for the entire um, the, for the entire thing, but they did get a small clip of a video. And when mama put that photo up, people thought it was little done on the drums and they just went, wow. He's, he, that was divine, that wasn't done, but keep your faith about little done, my brother. Keep praying for him. Cause uh, one day we will see him on the drums. Uh, but that's all of the announcements I have, I believe. We'll get into prayer. If you have any um, prayer request, requ feel free to leave a comment on either of our pages or on the church page, Free Gospel Deliverance Center of the Apostolic Faith. Or you can, you can leave it on Daddy's page, Bishop D.E. Hudson. Um, but we'll go into prayer real quick. Father God, oh, and let me tell you, I had, um, I did a podcast episode on Monday night, and it was a blessed time. It's called uh, Shoelaces. That's the channel. Shoelaces Truth Ties. I'll put a picture of of um, the page in the comments. And that recording will be available on the 21st. So I highly recommend you listen to that when it comes out on the 21st. I'll post it on my page because we had a really blessed time. Uh, Antoinette and Angie and I had a great time and God. So we'll go on in prayer. Father God, I thank you for all that you've done. I thank you for everybody that's listening in. I pray that they be blessed by your word. I pray that they seek to get closer to you every uh, session. I pray that they desire to open up their Bibles more than once a week, more than Wednesdays or Fridays, but that they seek daily bread uh, with you and time with you every day. Um, I ask you to meet every one of their needs, which I know you, I know you will because we're seeking your kingdom first. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So I thank you for doing that. I thank you for my sister Kim that just clicked on. We're praying for her and her family and her mother uh, thank you for being graceful and peaceful and merciful to them, uh, Father God. So we ask these and other blessings in the name in Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you guys. Tune in to Mama Friday and Daddy Sunday, and I'll see you Wednesday. God bless.